Welcome back to Coin Sense and Nonsense. Today, we're going to take a look at some constitutional coins that we picked up recently. I know I showed you this not too long ago, and this was kind of a catalyst for my interest in uh, obtaining more uh, older constitutional coins in decent condition. I had picked up some things along the way like this, and uh, actually I have a buddy who's uh, had a connection for me for a couple years and has helped me pick these things up um, at decent prices. Well, around the holidays this year, I was fortunate enough to be invited to the holiday party that um, the store that uh, my buddy gets these from uh, was having. And... Oh my, um, let me tell you my story of a uh, holiday party at a coin store. Alright, so here I am at a party with alcohol being served at a store where they sell coins. I'm uh, among coins that don't belong to me but potentially could and I'm around alcohol, that's not a good thing. So actually I avoided the alcohol first and I concentrated on the coins. And so I got this. This is an 1878 and look at that. Look at that. There's my Carson City. I finally got one. So I uh, asked the guy, what else do you have? Do you have anything else that I might be interested in? And so... There were two other Carson Cities there. I got a 1890 Carson City, and I got another 1878 Carson City. That's the same year as this one. Uh, this one's in a little nicer uh, condition. So there's a little story about this one. I'll show you a close-up. Um, this has a little bit of a story or variety to it, um, and uh, we will check that out under the scope. But let me show you what else I got. I can't believe it. All this stuff here, um, I ended up getting at a Christmas party or at a holiday party uh, at a coin shop. So I got three uh, Ikes, the brown Ikes. I got 72, 3, and 4. And so those are cool. They're in halfway decent, whoops, halfway decent condition. But the cases are already all popping off. So that's kind of not so cool. Um, I did get, uh, some Barber Quarters, uh, 1898, and I don't think this one has any, yeah, um, there are no mint marks on that one, 1909, and also no mint mark. So those are kind of cool. Um, I do like half dimes. I have a small collection of half dimes, but I didn't have a cap bust half dime. Look at that. It is kind of jacked up. It's The date is messed up, but it is 1831. But to be able to get a piece of history like this, it's just amazing. Um, and I know i got to flatten the staples and everything, so... Save those comments, but um, so these are just so cool to have. I do have a few like this, uh, this design, the Seated Liberty, um, or Liberty Seated, but um, yeah, this is another cool one to add to the collection. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's a little bit of a ding in that one, so uh, even though the condition's halfway decent, it's uh, not perfect. These are three cent. Uh, nickels or three cent nickel uh, composition anyway 1866 unbelievable and there's the three and so this is in halfway decent shape this one is 1870 and it's an even nicer condition you can see the oops you can see the lines in the three in the on the reverse but some dummy tried to drill through it. You can see in the of at the top there, um, there's a hole. Some moron uh, tried drilling, so that's not cool. Otherwise, that would be a really top-notch piece. But I'm still happy to have it. I got a good deal. And then 
I did get an Indian head sent. I got uh, 1859, which is actually the first year of the Indian head sent. Um, it's suspicious for having been cleaned. I don't know uh, the history of it. But again, got a decent deal on it, so I can't complain. Also, 1909 VDB. No S, but it is a VDB, and it's in great shape. I do have one other one of these that I did find uh, coin roll hunting, but this, the condition is not bad at all, and you can even see the VDB at this magnification with the with this camera. That's cool. So, what else did we get? We got large scents. I just recently got one large scent from Atmex, but uh, as a throw-in on, on my uh, Black Friday deal, I got they were on sale. But to get three more at a great deal, uh, when I was least expecting it, I got some really, really cool. So, um, again, this is just history in my hands here, so I uh, really love these. So... Uh, we'll look at a few of these a little closer up, and hopefully you're interested in checking them out. But this was the real mind blower for me. This is a 1825 half cent, unbelievable. It's really crusty condition. Got a good deal, but to have a coin that's from like the first 50 some years of the country, that is just amazing. So I think this qualifies now as my oldest uh, coin. I don't know that I have a something older than 1825, but yeah, that is awesome. So let's take a closer look at a couple of these. Oh, and actually I did get a couple more things here while I was uh, at the place. They, I couldn't resist this. This is a half Balboa, medio Balboa. Really nice uh, shape. Uh, I mean, it's not perfect or anything like that, but for the price I paid, it's not too, too worn. Um, this is 1930, which is the first year of issue of these. Uh, there were 300,000 minted of these, but still pretty awesome. And it's 90% uh, silver. You can see 12.5 grams. Um, so yeah, Republic of Panama and a half Balboa, medio Balboa. Awesome. So I think that's it of all the ones that I got for the little party I went to. Um, let's, uh, like I say, check them out. All right. So here's that 1890 Carson City dollar, uh, under the scope. And so, as a coin hunter, a variety hunter, I always check things under the scope after I get them. And so, when I looked at the date on this, I about soiled myself. Because I look at the 9 and the 0 there, there's like extra stuff there. And so I thought, oh my god, I've got a variety. And actually, it is. It's a repunch date. The only thing is, it's not really rare. There's a lot of these out there. So, the one time I get something and it's really gut doubling or a repunch, it's like everybody has it. So, <laughs> but still pretty cool. All right, and here's the 1840 large scent. I took it out of the flip or out of the two by two. Wanted to show, there's actually a couple things to look at on this one. Uh, in the earlier times of the large scent um, uh, of this uh, design, the head was tilted forward. This one is called a petite head, um, but you can see in relation to the date, the head is kind of tilted forward, um, especially in comparison with the uh, later ones where it's kind of more upright. So this is a more pleasing design for sure. And with the 1840, uh, there was a cool variety. Unfortunately, mine doesn't have it, um, where uh, they punched a 1 and an 8 in one of the dies. And then they stopped. And then when they switched, uh, there's actually a large date and a small date variety for 1840. Um, and so the, lar the small date variety is like a all four 
numbers uh, punched together. And so the variety that I'm talking about, uh, they had a 1-8 from the large date, and then they punched a small date, 1840, over that. So I was kind of hoping that's what this was, but unfortunately, no. So this is the small date version. Um, it is pretty cool, um, but it is the most common of the types. Um, so, but yeah, this is uh, definitely a cool piece of history. Figure what's going on. In 1840, that's uh, before the, so the uh, uh, Civil War. So, very, very cool. Um, and then uh, there were, um, uh, a, like I say, design changes um, as they uh, evolved. So, pretty neat. Well, now I know why I was stumbling. I couldn't remember what else I wanted to tell you about this. So this, like I mentioned, was called Petite Head. And this one is called Mature Head. So, there you go. Oh yeah, and one other thing, uh, they made these until 1857, and then uh, they switched to small scents. Uh, the Flying Eagle scent was uh, 1857 also. So, kind of neat. Alright, and speaking of design changes and varieties and whatnot, even in my half scent, uh, this is a Bowers Whitman uh, 2. And so that refers to, um, I guess there are other varieties where the spacing uh, on these stars is closer. Um, so I know this one is the type 2. And also where the curl of the hair uh, is in relation to the 5 um, determines um, which variety you have. Um, so, But I have the more common one, unfortunately, but it's still pretty darn cool. The condition is absolutely scorched, but just to have this, um, I thought was was pretty cool. So, and another uh, kind of a neat thing uh, with varieties um, is uh, these half dimes. Uh, so this is the capped bust uh, variety, and uh, this has kind of an interesting uh, story to it. This is an 1831, or you can barely tell that, but um, these restarted in 1829 uh, because they wanted to do a time capsule. Uh, they had built a new mint in Philadelphia, or a new mint building in Philadelphia, and they wanted to uh, make a time capsule and put one of these in the cornerstone. So uh, they uh, put these back in circulation in 1829 and then um, the design uh, stayed that way until I believe 1837 let me check all right I get a prize yes 1837 they made those until and then they switched uh, to the Liberty seated style um, and actually in 1837 they made one but it didn't have stars at all on this uh on the obverse uh or didn't have stars at all um and so what's interesting with these the design changed on these as well this this isn't one that i picked up uh at this party but this is just an example one uh united states of america appears on the reverse and then there's stars on the obverse uh, this one that I picked up at the party, you can see United States of America on the obverse. And again, different than the stars. So that is kind of cool. And then it's just got the wreath on the reverse. So, love these things. Alright, so yeah, this was just such an awesome deal. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed checking it out. Um, I've certainly had a good time showing it off, that's for sure. I realize it's all over the place with different denominations and whatnot. And again, I wish the condition were better, but I'll take what I can get. It can always uh, improve later. Um, I don't really have a typeset going, but I've got a good start here, I'll tell you. So um, maybe someday I'll do that, I don't know. Right now, uh, eh, just picking up whatever comes along. So, 
Again, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. I plan to do some other constitutional uh, additions to the collection, so uh, more coming up. So thanks so much for watching. Coin Sense and Nonsense. Until next time, bye. Bye.